people knew or understood endometriosis then women would not have to suffer as much as they do you know women would be able to actually keep their jobs and they wouldn't have to take so many days off they could even ask for monthly leave to take care of themselves myself I have lost about five jobs because of this endometriosis disease and it's not that I don't I just don't want to go to work it's not that I'm just saying hey forget it I just want to sleep all day it's because I can't move it's because I can't get up. It's because my body hurts. It's because I'm throwing up. It, like there's reasons behind this, you know? And let's just be honest here. Nobody has ever been fired for having an asthma attack or fired for going into a hypoglycemic coma. You know, those are side effects of their respective diseases, but they're not looked at as a reason to fire somebody. And cramps and pain is a side effect of menstruation. So I shouldn't be held penalized for that. And I think women, I think the playing field needs to be even for, for all people, for women and, as well. So as you've probably gotten a picture of by now, um, the lack of understanding endometriosis in the medical world is placing a huge dent on our progress and being able to heal ourselves properly or with conventional medicine. So honestly, I just, you just have to take matters into your own hands, you know, and a lot of these conventional medicines, these you know, anti-inflammatory, ibuprofen, all these crazy medications honestly does not help. Okay, I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you it didn't help me. Um, you know, all it did was make my symptoms worse. You know, I would be throwing up, like I would be fine for the whole day. And then if I take um, an ibuprofen because my head hurts or because my body is hurting, now I'm throwing up, now I'm this, now I'm that. It's bringing on all these extra problems. So. You have to take it into your own hands and you know endometriosis is a chronic disease it's incurable so even if you do go through the laparoscopic process and you get all of the endometrium removed there's a possibility that it could still return so it takes you know a process you kind of have to keep going through it and figure out your own little system for what works and that's what i'm going to share with you guys right now Still remember to keep in touch with your gyno because you want to work in collaboration, not against them. I am, personally, I really don't like using conventional medicine, but if I have an ailment or a pain or something is going on and I don't understand it, go to the doctor. Like, I'm gonna go to the doctor and figure out what it is. And then once you have your diagnosis, you can take it and figure out how to prescribe your own little set of your little routine to keep yourself and subdue your symptoms. So I'm going to share with you some remedies that I use for myself that are really beneficial in subduing my symptoms. Keep like It's not going to take away endometriosis, but like I said, it's something you have to live with, so you have to learn how to manage it in your own way. And I've found two ways that have been the most beneficial to me. You don't have to do it you know, but it's been working out for me and I hope that it can give you some peace of mind also. So my first remedy that I started doing is something called the low FODMAP diet. And basically what that is, it's a extremely restrictive elimination diet that focuses on removing certain sugars from your diet. So the word FODMAP actually stands, it's an acronym that stands for the five different sugars that you'll be avoiding. And um, these sugars are really, they're really, really like agitating to your digestive tract all the way through from your esophagus to your stomach to your small and large intestine to your colon. It irritates it all the way through. And this isn't just with people who have compromised systems or, you know, that have uh, digestive issues already. This is with everybody. Um, there's actually been studies that have shown that these, there's, you know, hormonal spikes in the body due to these sugars. So the low FODMAP diet focuses on keeping those out. The low FODMAP diet is typically used to, uh, or doctors prescribe it for people who have IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. And when I heard this, this was like my moment of clarity because every time I would go to the doctors and they wouldn't have an explanation for me and they ran 100 million CT scans on me and have found nothing, that was kind of like the last thing that they were like, oh, well you must have IBS. And so 
a lot of the symptoms that happen from IBS are very similar to the symptoms of endometriosis. So I just figured, hey, let me just put two and two together. Let me see if it's gonna help, if it's gonna help me. If, if I try this diet out, if it's gonna help. And oh my God, it helps so, so much. It really was like the best thing that I have ever done. Um, and it is really, really restrictive and it is really like, like it kind of sucks a little bit. Um, but you only do it for a certain amount of time. It's kind of, think of it more like a detox. It's not really like a diet where you change forever. Um, so when you cut out these foods, uh, you kind of start to kind of play trial and error with what food sensitivities you have and don't have, you know, and through this diet, I was able to find out myself that I have a super hard, huge sensitivity to like meat and dairy. So I cut, okay, well, <laughs> I didn't cut the dairy out. I'm working on that one. But I cut meat out and ever since I cut the, the meat out, it really made a difference in my body. So I did the FODMAP diet for 30 days. It started off as two weeks just to kind of, and it was strict, you do it cold turkey, I'm sorry, you have to do it cold turkey. Um, because you really need to start the detox like right then and there, you can't just slowly wean it, like you gotta cut it out. Um, so I did that for two weeks and I started to notice just the little differences in my body. Like I wasn't having this chronic, chronic abdominal pain that I used to get in like the upper right, uh, no, left-hand region of my abdomen. Um, it would be every single day, 24 seven, all the time. And I would never, I'd never understood what the heck it was and why it was bothering me, but it was such a painful gnawing pain constantly. But once I started this diet, I kid you not, it went away within like the first three days. So I was really happy about that. And I just kind of kept going with it. So I kept up with it for, for 30 days. Um, and then at the end of the 30 days or however long you decide to detox for, you have to start reintroducing those foods back into your diet. Because if you don't, like I said, it's very restrictive. So you're not gonna have a great, great quality of life if you don't start putting these things back. So you kind of wanna just try it out see the effects and then start putting the food back. Um, so even when I started putting back all those foods after the 30 days, um, I still had great results. I, I didn't, the pain was not as bad as it used to be or there's no pain at all. Um, and that's, oh, and my periods got a whole lot more manageable, which is what I was really like concerned about. Um, they were really bad. I would be on the floor crying and uh, throwing up non-stop and it's just all these symptoms and dizzy I, but all of that came to a stop after those 30 days and even now that I'm back to regular eating it's it's fine like I still don't have it as bad so it's super controversial people talk about food low the low FODMAP diet being work uh, successful for endometriosis a lot of people say it works a lot of people say it doesn't um, and I don't really know if they are you know Inter interrelated IBS and endometriosis. Maybe they are, but I can tell you from experience that it help, it works. It helped me so, so much. And like I said, I haven't had the chance to um, have my laparoscopy done yet, but I can tell you from experience right here, right now that it works. And I know what people are gonna say, but just try it for yourself. Cause what's the worst that's gonna happen? Nothing. Like, you know, all you have to do is gain. So try it.